Now for us, now go over a little bit of what we've done before. The history behind The Wizard of Oz is programming. Like our movies, like our television, like the idiots running for office right now. Like people who are too stupid to see a horrific fire in Canada right next to them and still think it's okay to light fire because we have some dry wood in the backyard. Suggests, anyway, that the Wizard of Oz has had an important part in the occult world all along. And one of the secrets of the mystery religions, especially the Egyptian Isis, the mystery Venusian religion, the veils of Venus that I still haven't gotten into completely. Because it has, this is about the ability to use drugs, torture, and blindness to create multiple personalities. Even the word Oz is known to have been used by its author as an abbreviation for Osiris, monarch victims like Prince, have the golden penis of Osiris placed into them. The Grimm brothers, Kabbalistic Jews, gathered the folk stories together, and those stories were bloody when they were older. Their stories are full of spells and trances and drugs. Sleeping Beauty is put to sleep. And the trigger to wake her is a kiss on the lips. These are serious hints at the occult world that it didn't stop programming people with dissociative states and triggers. And when the ancient Egyptian empires fell, this was continued because it worked. This is a path of the dead. How to make a zombie, if you like. Now, instead of using modern lingo like hypnotize, they would say cast a spell. Freemasonry, the right worshipful master would charge, which is still hypnotize, which is still cast a spell on initiate. Now, the occultist bomb a member of the Theosophical Society, was inspired by a spirit who gave him a magical key to write the Wizard of Oz book, which came out in 1900. The book's story, full of satanic activity, full of satanic thinking, the story was chosen in the late 1940s, to be the basis for all Illuminati intelligence communities' trauma-based mind control, specifically that programming. As a way of enhancing an effect of programming, monarch slaves are conditioned to place trigger items into their lives. When it was made a movie, Judy Garland, who had lived a life touched by a cult world's abuse, like Prince has, like several of his brothers have, her late husband, Mickey DeVinco, Satanist, and chief assistant to Rory Raiden, rich Satanist, who worked with the Illuminati, who and who controlled the Process Church, the Covens, which had members, you know, mass murderers, Berkowitz, Monarch Slave, Charlie Manson. And I know some people were taken aback when I said that he was a Monarch Slave, but you can't fool me. Not with that sort of thing. I know someone who's pretending to be dominant and is not. 
and there are several members, of course, of the Carr family who are tied with both D. Vinco and Raiden's Process Church and the Illuminati, so with numerous long-term connections between the Wizard of the Oz books and various other high levels of the occult world, it is not without reason that one could at least theorize that the original series of the 14th Oz books had an ulterior motive behind them, and I've named them before. These books are still being sold, still being read to children, still being watched via movie, still being programmed with trauma-based total mind control. And this will sound like completely has nothing to do with the fires. But it does. Everything we're seeing is about Oz right now. Everything, even the fighting of the ridiculousness of, let's pick who's going to be our trauma-based mind controller of the United States. No, anyway, the originals came out in 1900. In the 30s and 40s and 50s, words were retypeset, given different pages. So when working with a survivor, might help to identify the decade, the edition that the slave was programmed with. Because the pictures and the page numbers varied from edition to edition, and you can find out your specific programming as to why. So look it up. And I mean everyone. There's not special people anymore. We have all been programmed the exact same way. Now, of course, having good pictures is an asset in programming. To see certain images that are triggering certain things. know the best examples of this, I guess, MGM Complex, the Grand Complex in Las Vegas, although other theme parks around the world also use this Wizard of Oz theme, and it's one of the first things country gets. You know they've sold out by how much Disney stuff they have. So if you've read um, Fritz Springmeier's Be Wise as Serpents, you will know how the Theosophical Society ties with Freemasonry and Satanism and Lucius Trust. Now again, give you a list of people all associated with, and you can look on the page, I don't want to read it again, but right from Adolf Hitler to Manly P. Hall. <coughs> Sorry, guys, one sec. Hi, Druid Council member. And I know we'll find things telling you that um, he was given this title because of his work. True and not true. Illuminati Theta Programmer, for sure. Now, Frank Baum is the man who wrote the book, Wizard of Oz, member of the Theosophical Society, L. Frank Baum. And you know how they like to use the three. He lived in South Dakota, created the Wizard of Oz book as a Theosophical fairy tale incorporating ancient wisdom of the mystery religions. The books have so much material from inside the secret world that few who understand the Illuminati wonder if Bomb was an insider. The moral of the book is that we must rely on ourselves, for we alone have the power to save ourselves, not too dark, really, but this is part of the original 
story that we've been told about Satan in the garden. Although, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous on so many, many levels. There's, the garden is because we breathe in, because the trees are breathing out. That's it. But their idea of Satan. Satan is simply dressed up as the same original lie. It's a different packaging. Distributed worldwide as a popular fairy tale. Baum explained how he came to write the book. He said it was pure inspiration. I wonder if he heard a sound. Or a frequency. He was talking to the lords of the air. Well, it came right out of uh, the blue, he said. He thinks sometimes that the great author has a message to get across, and he has to use it or use whatever instrument is at hand. I happen to be that medium. I believe the magic key was given to me to open the doors to sympathy and understanding and joy and peace and happiness. So he's admitting he channeled something. Long story short. Now in his time, the head of this theosophical society, Blavansky, had been putting out her journal called Lucifer. In other words, I suspect Bob knew what this society was all about, that he himself was deeply into that and or the occult. Now, the book Wizard of Oz, again out in 1900, it was until 39 that the movie was made. In the next section we'll go into, we'll cover numerous parallels between the Wizard of Oz and the occult world and the programming. For those who are unfamiliar with the occult world, buckle up. <laughs> now I realize some parallels might seem rather stretched. So when you see how many parallels there are, though, the occult nature of these books just sinks in. Authors could provide the reader with way more parallels between Satanism, Wizard of Oz book, but... No, I believe the few that I go into will show you where I'm going with this. Now, a TM is Blavansky. Uncle Henry represents her unmissed manifested logo. With the logos that we've talked about. The carnival huckster who becomes the wizard. Well, this relates, obviously, to your entertainment. How we are being entertained. And later, if you're a very good entertainer, you get risen up. And again, the huckster. The prince character. It's advertised as being connected with the royal families of Europe. The royal families of Europe... Our secret Santas, I mean um, Satanists, powerful occult bloodlines. No, they're not Jewish, they're German. Now Dorothy is brought to Oz by a cyclone. The word cyclone, Greek word, means both the circle or the coil of the snake. In other words, the snake, the old serpent, takes Dorothy to Oz. Dorothy's three companions represent mental, emotional, physical bodies that Bovansky wrote about all the time. Dorothy acquires these three special companions, chimeras, entities, demons, Helpers 
from a spiritual world, because she had entered a spiritual world. And just as Theosophy said, we will when we come into incarnation. Now, to quote Blavatsky again, there is no danger that dauntless courage cannot conquer. There is no trial that spotless purity cannot pass through. There is no difficulty that strong intelligence cannot surmount. In the book, the Tin Woodsman was an ordinary being of flesh, but a wicked witch cast a spell on him. He kept chopping off his parts, well, his body parts, which were replaced by the tins, tinsmith, until became the first bionic man. We can go back to this as Cain. He represents Cain because he's a smith, but not exactly human. This um, Cain has AI in it. We've gone into that. But basically, he has a mechanical body. He is an AI. And boy, hasn't the Illuminati been pulling this one out for longer than we thought? Now, in step with the Wizard of Oz, the mind control programming, the wicked witch and naughty children cannot stand water. They dissolve. Robotic clones are created in the, in the minds of monarch slaves, which can only be mentally dissolved by mentally placing water on them. Dorothy goes questing in Oz. Theosophists, New Agers, Satanists, gamers go on quests. LARPers. <laughs> You know, the people who dress up and pretend to play cross. Not that I know any of those people. I used to anyway. So Oz, shaped like a Mandela with the Emerald City in the center, impassable barrier, four-sidedness, four symbolic colors, the circle and the center. The colors and the directions given in Oz may have, well, have many other symbolic meanings here in the occult. But for instance, Emerald City is green. Green is the fourth point of the eastern star, um, the girly Freemasonry. And Satan's color, the root that Dorothy follows in Oz, has the shape of a T. Three points, defining an inverted triangle. The yellow brick road, Again, suggests gold, the perfected metal. Gold is considered to be divine, source of wisdom by the Illuminati. And I'll continue with that in a couple minutes. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio. And we're off to see the wizard. So, we go through the Mandela that looks like CERN. And then Blavatsky said, there is a road, steep and thorny, beset with perils of every kind, but yet a road, and it leads to the very heart of the universe. So, this is the cosmic womb. This is what CERN is. This is the road that I was talking to you about, connected by the nuclear facilities that are causing a frequency, that are bringing to us light and sound. This was the yellow brick road that Baum, the Asavist, sought to portray in his fairy tale. The book contains a great deal more perils and adventures on the road than the movie. The great teacher is fake. But Dorothy and her own companions have the abilities to help themselves if only they'd realize their own powers. 
with the, again the help of the good witch of the south this is in line with the Osiphoral society the church of satan other occult groups their teachings that teach the individual has capacities within themselves to achieve everything this new age stuff is from them one of their publication states prepare thyself for thou wilt have to travel on alone. The teacher can point the way. This is what most of the sciences, the what the occult works, the religions say this in a different way. That the teacher will point out the way. The student must go. Now part of the mindset of this and I use Satanism loosely because they made up him as well this is all the good guy bad guy thing but this programming is that reality and fantasy need to become blurred this blurring has been part of the brainwashing that has been given systematically to all the children on this planet Within the monarch slaves, they have an incredible difficult, incredibly difficult time to put, differentiate between reality and fantasy because all of the mind programming that you too have been taught, there are several techniques that will determine for the survivors if their memories are real in the board game which we've brought up a lot Illuminati put out by the people connected to the Illuminati the game states don't believe in any of this it is all true these are the type of double blind self contradictory statements that are used Slaves are programmed full of double blinds with, with this panache for blurring reality in mind. The next quote where the president of this society admiringly describes the Wizard of Oz. He says part of Baum's joke is that things are never what they seem. Dorothy portrayed a simple, harmless, cute little girl. But it's her that kills the wicked witches, both of the East and the West. This scarecrow lacks brains, but he has all the ideas in the company. The tin man, the woodman, seems to lack a heart, but he's full of sentiment, is always weeping. Cowardly lion seems to be a coward, but he takes brave action whenever it's called for. The wizard, great and powerful. Weak, simpering, a little bit cross-dressing pedophile-y. Now, Oz seems to be glorious, delightful land. Kansas, dry, gray, dull. But Oz is the world of illusion. Kansas was home. Things are not what they seem. Not in Oz and never in Kansas. So a very close relationship between Dorothy and her dog. Very subtle connection between these satanic cults and the use of familiars, especially a dog, and alludes to, well, God. Arcs and barks that we've talked about before. Now, you may remember an example written about how the Illuminati kingpin, Alfred I, DuPont's dog, mummy, served as Alfred's spirit familiar. Animals are often used in ritual. 
This connection is very subtle, perhaps too subtle to be worthy of mention. Except those in Satanism will see a significance, even though others won't. Although we look to the first God. Again, we've talked about what he is, what that is is. So what is trivial to one person may not be for the next. A slave trained as a child will be allowed to bond with a pet. The child will want to bond with a pet anyway because people are terrifying. So the pet is killed in some porn trauma kind of thing and this seems to happen frequently and then there is the rainbow which we've talked about the seven colors that are usually used the two invisible colors they don't talk about of course secret colors the black and white have a long occult significance of being great spiritual hypnotic device. This is why Blavatsky was the one to set forth the seven rays. It's from her. So, Constance Cumbie, in her book, The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, exposes the New Age occult movement, correctly writes the rainbow, also called the Rainbow Bridge, or the Anta Karana is a device, a hypnotic device. The Supreme Council of the 33rd Masonry has used the rainbow to cover their magazine. In the book Druidism, The 21 Lessons of Merlin, the rainbow is described as a true sign of magic. It exists in both worlds at once. So Elvira Glitch is a woman who owns one half of um, the county that Dorothy lives in, Kansas. She is shown later in the Land of Oz, transformed into a witch. Many of the Illuminati are rich. They lead double lives. People who meet them at a ritual will see the side of these rich people, another side. And at these rituals, people are tranced from drugs, chanting, mind control. They are, at that point, over the rainbow. And we'll talk about that ritual with Prince. We'll get to it. I guess not today. <laughs> see, I need 12 hours. I'm not, anyway, I'll go on. So, Professor Marvel uses a crystal ball, which he claims was used by the priests of Isis. Isis, Osiris, part of the ancient Egyptian mystery religion, has been supplied to us. We don't know what those people really believed. And just like the people from... Uh, God, the name escapes me today. See how this Oz programming is making my mind go. Nobody knows what you really believed. Not your people, not anyone's people, not a hundred years ago. That has been wiped. We know there was something else because we can feel it. But this again is the modern Satan, Satanism. So Kansas is usually black and white. Oz is in color. Reality is displayed in witchcraft, Satanism. Make-believe is considered more colorful than reality. Also, as an escape from this world. Satanists use drugs to enhance their perceptions of color. Many of the Satanists are actually colorblind. Some of the famous writers, 
took drugs themselves to be put into altered states of consciousness in order to release their creativity. Both good and bad witches in Oz carry a staff. <laughs> well, we've talked about staffs before. It just makes me laugh that they're going to make everything dirty. Now again, the Satanism, the Illuminati that we have been presented, priestesses also carry similar staffs. Also the idea that there are good and evil witches, white and black, these are the secret colors again, is straight from the occult, which follows the Gnostic beliefs, which is why I think the same guys wrote all this shit. Now anyway, several scenes involve a transference of power via some transference of slippers from a witch. So, in ritual, to transfer power, a matriarch or a mother of darkness, a lily or Venus, a red queen, will kill the person in a position of authority with a strike on the forehead, with a special mace, like staff, you also dub someone that way, and then put on their slippers. Ruby slippers are actually used as a symbolic or symbol of authority. Do you remember when the Pope had his little fantastic slippers? But it is the authority of a monarch. It is a level in the Illuminati. Shoes are said to be golden at the Mothers of Darkness level. The Bad Witch uses poisoned, poisoned apples, poisoned brew. Covens in real life do the same thing. Wizard is portrayed as someone who rules and is benevolent. Witchcraft, wizards do rule, even though in some groups wizards are actually witches. Winged monkeys in the haunted forest hearken back to the pagan, to other cultures that place wings on various idols, especially animal idols. It is a totem again, a winged monkey. It also goes back to perhaps family lineages, too. Now, trees are alive, like animals in the film. Illuminati believe trees have spirits. I believe trees have spirits. Most of your people on this planet, I think, believe trees have spirits. Because they breathe out, we breathe in. Now, in one of the Oz films, even the stories have... The stones have personalities. They talk. This comes straight out of Druidism. Tin Man. Very interesting. Is a person that has been part of ceremony time immemorial because he is Cain. He is an AI. He is the mechanical man. He is something not quite human. Now, the first initial ceremony that children of the Illuminati may remember is where a tin man with an axe watches over a presentation to the coven. If a parent presents the child, nothing is done. If the parent refuses to present the child, then the tin man in the ritual will use his axe to sever the child's head on a chopping block. The tin man will also appear in Tin Man programming and in Tin Man's castle may well be built in a person's head, the temple in your head, except you try to keep him there. So the point here I'm trying to make is that the Tin Man is part of the ritual that we have been trained to recognize the Tin Man. That's why we are shown the Tin Man over and over and over again. Sometimes he's a big, strong guy, like in Matrix movies, covered in skin, yet he is not human. He is Cain. 
He's AI. You with me? He's a smith. He's usually a builder. That's why Cain goes to the land of Nod. Now, Dorothy kills the wicked witch of the West by a sharp blow to the forehead with the witch's staff. What do you mean? What do I, okay. Cain becomes a king. In the stories, Bible, um, all of them pretty much. That the people at one point no longer want to rule themselves. They want someone else to do it. So that's why you better call Saul. A king comes. He makes them build houses, temples, castles, depending on the time. That's why I'm saying he's a smith. Okay? Makes sense? A little bit? I'll do another show on that, but I don't want to be annoying because I've talked about it before. Anyway, this is done in the Illuminati. The sharp blow on the forehead. So when an elderly witch is being replaced, in both cases anyway, whether in a movie or in real life, the Illuminati, when a witch is killed, the people have a ceremony. It's very important. It goes to something that Prince did before he died. Bear with me. It's important. In real life, in the secret world, a scroll is used to certify that a witch is dead, both physically and spiritually. That's why some people, when they finish school, are given a scroll. It means that you are alive and dead. At the same time, you are certified. It means that you are no longer what you were or something else. So the movie had this in it. Just one example of thousands of grand dams killed in rituals like this. Doris Duke, who was ritually killed in 1993. Halloween, also called All Hallows' Eve, in Beverly Hills. The Illuminati method for killing a grand dame, the great queen, dark woman, Red Queen, and passing her spiritual power is done with reverence. No blood is spilt out of respect. And this woman gives her life willingly. At death, the last breath is inhaled by the replacement to transfer power. That's why a lot of things are sealed with a kiss at the beginning. So, there may have been as many as 2,000, 3,000 grand dams. Anyway, at such coronations, the grandmothers, whose systems are mistresses, the wives of the dark ones, and the hierarchical leaders. The next way, rank, the grand dams are often veiled in ritual and would wear robes in different colored linings. Veiled, because these queens are the unseen. You are not allowed to see them. You prob We probably still have them now. Now, different colors of linings show different grades, just as we've talked about in the Illuminati rituals where they wear different gems. Different colors, some are diamonds. You know what I mean? So a typical grandmother vestment or robe is black satin. A velvet dress draped with a draped neckline. Ritual symbols down the center of the robe. And after some, like Doris Duke, willingly gave her life, the head is served on a platter, silver platter, at a banquet. Four deeper altars of high-level slaves. This is part of their way of life. They are told it is their birthright. It is their heritage. This is why they are told they are special people, separate and aside from everyone else. 
alters will not be able to identify with any kind of culture at large, any kind of people at large. And again, this is a symbolism of what we're seeing in the movies, that there are two kinds of people always fighting. One is rich, one is poor, but they are the same. We are the same on this planet, like it or not. Now, anyway, this is to give up their programming which means giving up their magical powers because they are told, again, that they are special. And to give up what they have worked so hard for. To leave the world, and to leave anyway, would need to see something that they perceive as better. They are locked into their slavery to do their exposure only to secret Illuminati culture and their value system. We hear people, whistleblowers, that escape these systems. I'm going to say that most of them, most of the people we hear have escaped, absolutely have not escaped because they kill you. How many times we have to see that in a year? You step out of line, they are done with you. That's it. You're done. You're not going to get on little radio stations or programs like mine and say, yeah, I was Illuminati high level. No, you weren't. Fibber. So anyway, because of their dissociation with the rest of their own systems of altars, they don't even know what they've done. They don't perceive a need to change their lives. Any more than a Bushman would be able to feel the need to wear shoes. And why would they want shoes anyway? If he has gotten along without shoes all of this time. So why should a high-level slave want change? When they have gotten along fine without it. Experience shows during deep programming, most of the lower-level altars will want to escape their abuse. The higher level ones, the deep ones, are so separated from the abuse that some can't give it up or they can't recognize it's happening. So throughout the movie, squirrels are used over and over again. And they continue to use squirrels for their ritual functions. This means you are a higher level slave, basically. Okay, so the Wicked Witch of the West says that her question was not to kill or not to kill Dorothy, but rather how to kill Dorothy. For these things must be done delicately. This is exactly the attitude displayed within the Illuminati. The film has occult items, crystal balls, many scenes, haunted castles, magic, and a benevolent wizard. The wizard is never benevolent, my darlings. And at one point, the lion says, I do believe in spooks. Ghosts. I do, I do, I do, I do. Today, intelligence agents are called what? Spooks. The lion, tin man, Dorothy, scarecrow must prove themselves worthy to receive benevolence from Oz. The occult is full of rituals where the participant must prove himself worthy. The phrase, seeds of learning. This is for Illuminati ceremonies. Staffs, like the movie, has used by various occult groups. These staffs often serve as stun guns, weapons, so shock can be applied during the ceremony. The shocks may be applied so that the victim doesn't remember the ceremony. 
this is used on a massive scale with the seven magic weapons I started with. A lot of people don't know. As a matter of fact, they would never believe that they are being harmed. This is too crazy, right? Too crazy. Now the parallels, and this starts to get deep between the Wizard of Oz and the programming. Dorothy is told she doesn't have a brain if she has gotten into trouble. Dorothy is looking for a place where there is no trouble, which is a place that is over the rainbow. So, to escape pain, altars go over the rainbow, a.k.a. Alice in Wonderland programming, going through the looking glass. One steps through, one steps over. This can have to do with whether the training is sexual or not, but not always. Dorothy becomes unconscious. The world begins spinning. They see disjointed pictures. There are flashes. Also, this happens with slaves. Later in the film, Dorothy says, My, people have come and go so quickly. This is exactly what happens to a monarch slave, whose multiple personalities come and they go. When a multiple switch in and out, they switch very fast. It feels like spinning, a spinning process. You walk through CERN, that CERN template thing. You spin around the little path. With me? So just like most hiccups stop in their own, the rapid uncontrolled switching, which can be triggered by stress, usually stops on its own. Systems subconsciously know they are going to be tortured and used may out of a subconscious fear begin this revolving switching. It is said that the victim will also become comatose if the rapid spinning goes on too long. You pass out. Personalities are then switched in what has been called a tornado spin or tornado spinning or going to Kansas. Personalities called spin-off personalities come up. Now, according to the number of revolutions, the slave is commanded to spin. Spinning, ancient ritual, and it's something that we do naturally. Children like to spin. There's always one child who likes to spin. Spinning is a part, this is Sufism, this is the ancient ritual of the spinning. This brings you to different states. So by spinning the slave, the master can choose a specific agent. An agent that will step forward or a sexual perversion that he wants each spin-off personality to be trained to carry out. Specifically, a different perversion. So, over the rainbow in Oz is for the monarch slave to be in a trance. And in a certain area of programming, to be fluctuated at both ends as an observer and not a participant. To go to the other extreme and become a participant. And the theme song of the movie goes now I'm going to get deep and if any of this what I've said so far is bothering you step away okay no judge no judgment so anyway somewhere over the rainbow there's a land where dreams that you dare to dream really come true I wanted to sing it but I know I better not. Now, 
voices are mine are specific. They are triggers. So I'm trying to be careful. But anyway, these lyrics are a method to hypnotize and confuse the brain so that you will be made to perceive the over the rainbow experience, which is usually horrible. It is abuse, but it is just a dream. The dissociative mind is only too happy to call this trauma a dream, which is lived as a reality for the moment. It is nevertheless recorded by the mind as fantasy. It is why they do what they do in movies now. That you will notice the movie is freaking horrible. Violent. They will show the violence right from the beginning. Traumatic. Guts all over the place. But in the end, there's a happy ending. The guy gets the girl. There is love. Everlasting. So you've forgotten that you had just spent the hour and a half being freaking traumatized. And that's why you can watch it. Because this is nevertheless... A fantasy. That's how they do it. Now, the term for this, cryptoamnesia. It means a process where the proper functioning of memory is um, hypnotically mes- messed up, intermingled, twined. That's why they use twins. So the slave's internal world becomes a reality. External world becomes the land of Oz, which is perceived as a make-believe. Dwarfs. Used in the internal programming. Hollywood hired a large number of them for the movie cast. There were all kinds of stories that there were like weird sex ritual things going on. The munchkins in the movie. Mengele known as programmer Dr. Green, was especially interested in experimenting traumas on dwarfs. Seriously. For bona fides and recognition symbols, monarch slaves wear diamonds to signify that they are presidential models. Rubies to signify their art, their Oz programming for prostitution. Males and females, emeralds to signify their programming to do drugs, to do drug business, to sell. Rings are used to signify what activity the slave is doing, what rank or level that they are in, in the cult. Monarch slaves are taught to follow the yellow brick road. No matter what fearful things lie ahead, the slave must follow the yellow brick road, which is set out before you by your master. For some slaves used as track stars, their yellow brick road was the track that they had to run. Yellow Brick Road is the runway in which altars are trained to fly off, to exit their internal world, and take the body. The Yellow Brick Road also pertains to the assignment that that altar is given. Now go back to the movie that I told you about. It's cartoony. Do you remember... um? The Matrix one, where that guy is a track star and he runs straight out of the Matrix. Very interesting. You need to watch that one. But anyway, you follow the yellow brick road, go down the road that has been assigned by command, and you will run until you die. The yellow brick road programming is placed in the mind of a child via the yellow brick road of the Wizard of Oz. Remember the key words, follow the yellow brick road. To get someone onto the yellow brick road, what do you do? You know the access code, and you get them there through the poppy field. 
the color codes are important to get an altar through the field of poppies. Fiddler is an important word to get um, the yellow brick road to. It signifies a programmer. In the context of the programmer is here, go over the rainbow. And then the altars eat what is variously called music or a script or letter, which are words meaning instructions. So in the 1900 edition of the book, on page 31 to 32, it says, Programming cues are in caps. She closed the door, locked it. Put the key, and that's in caps, carefully, in the pocket of her dress. And so, with Toto trotting along soberly behind her, and the rest is all in caps, she started on her journey. There were several roads nearby, but it did not take her long to find the one paved with yellow brick. All of that was in caps. Within a short time, she was walking briskly towards the next is in caps, Emerald City, her silver shoes, all of that is in caps, tinkling merrily on the hard, and that was small, the next part, caps, yellow roadbed. The sun shone, those are small, the next one are in caps, bright and the birds sang sweet. Next, small. And Dorothy did not feel nearly as bad as you might think a little girl would who had, next in caps, suddenly whisked away from her own country and sat down in the midst of a strange land. Next, small. The houses were, houses of the munchkins were odd looking dwellings. Next. All were painted blue. Next couple words are small. For in this country of the caps, east blue, the favorite color. Five little fiddlers played as loudly as possible and the people were laughing and singing and small, while a big table nearly was loaded with caps, delicious fruits. That's the program, by the way, delicious fruits. You love it. It'll be tasty. It'll be good for you. Next. And this is small, nuts, caps, pies, caps, and small, and cakes, and many other caps, other good things to eat. That means scripts and ingest. So the monarch slaves are being threatened with fire like the scarecrow. They also see people dismembered like the scarecrow is dismembered. For them, it is not an idle threat. The front altars also have hearts full of pain like the scarecrow. Certain altars are not given courage and must have their hearts taken from them. The altars who are programmed not to have hearts are typically, or hypnotically, told the same thing. The thing the Tin Man says, I could be human if I only had a heart, but you are not human. You are what they've trained you for. You could be a soldier, heartless, killer. And look at chapter four. And I'll, I'll go into um, hypnosurgery. I'll talk to you about it later. It's trigger words. Some altars, altars are taught that they are stupid, that you have no brain. You hear this a lot. This is abuse. People are told that they are stupid, that they have no brain, and this is how 
they stay in the relationship that they are getting beaten. And a women. But we have all been programmed in this way. It doesn't work with everyone, obviously. Not everyone stays and gets their ass kicked. Not everyone's getting their ass kicked. But if you found out how many were, you'd be shocked. Now, the scarecrow is asked the question, how can you talk without a brain? The scarecrow answers, some people without a brain can do a lot of talking. And you must admit, he's got a point there. So the Emerald City, this is a deep programming trigger. The Emerald City in the programming will be well guarded. It will be hard to reach. Several important things will be placed inside the Emerald City, including deeper altars, hidden treasures, they're called, secret places. You may have heard of it as the Emerald Tower of Secrets. For those of you who are getting into what I'm talking to about right now. It's used for programming. The Emerald City in the programming will be well guarded. Again, as I said, castles are used the same way. Lots of castles, either in a person's mind, in the imagery, purely de not, um, demonic, are placed inside the slave's mind, usually with um, a Disney reference, like um, the mermaids in The Mermaid, Little Mermaid, where if you look closer, they're all freaking penises all over the place. So winged monkeys are able to watch in the movies somewhat like spy satellites and early programming of this winged monkeys and if you remember the Vedic teachings I've told you about winged monkeys are used often but in this time they create fear the fear that you are always being watched because they watch you they are the watchers Hence the wing monkeys. Now flowers used in movies and books are used in programming. The witch uses poppy flowers. We still use poppy flowers. But that puts the lion and Dorothy to sleep. Opium, cocaine, used to tranquilize monarch slaves. Prince used poppies. And he may have used them a lot heavier than we've talked about. And they were found on him. We'll go into it. But anyway, an altar of a slave will get trancy when they em enter the poppy field. So heroin, cocaine, that's poppies. That's why you're guarding it. So in the film, Dorothy says, what is happening? I'm so sleepy. She and the lion get sleepy for no reason, very quickly. Slaves do the same thing. Waking up with snow in the movie is nothing less than pointing towards cocaine, which is a common substance given to slaves to help make them dependent Dorothy states at one point in the movie that she doesn't remember, then follows up with, I guess it doesn't matter. And then they just go on. That it was okay, we just got stoned there. But hourglasses appear in the movie at several spots, and they also occur in various contexts in people who have been programmed specifically. Some victims of the programming have hourglass configurations, each created around a separate access. It's why they told you it's important to have an hourglass figure. It's why they made corsets to give you one. Hourglasses 
of the ability to be rotated, which causes certain altars to be brought forward. They are timekeepers, timepieces. Monarch slave masters also use hourglasses to indicate to their slaves that death is close, and that the time is running out. This is the way the wicked witch used an hourglass on Dorothy, who happens to be saved just as the hourglass runs out. Slave masters actually have large hourglasses, sometimes three feet high, like the movie. In Kathy O'Brien's autobiography of her life as a monarch slave in Transformation of America, she has a photograph of Cheney's hourglass on his desk with him seated. This hourglass was used to threaten her as a slave. Time is running out. Right? So when a monarch slave sees an hourglass, they may switch. But basically it's a reminder to straighten up and fly right. One slave was told, the sun that shifts through the hourglass is a measure of your worthiness to live or die. The hourglass, the shape, basically two tri triangles that touch at their peaks or an X configuration, X marks the spot. Of course, with the tops of the X having lines, child's mind is to visualize this configuration this is a compass, as in four points, north, south, east, west, that they see an X. Configuration is also an XY axis, upon which a city is structured. Now a glass, then, is tied to several other concepts, which integrate themselves well with a basic X shape of an hourglass. Circles with X's are stacked on top of each other to form different worlds. Contain altars. That, my dear, is the flat earth. And there's lots of them around. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. So, the two pie-shaped pieces of the hourglass will hold one world. While the other, well, while the hourglass configuration made by two adjacent pieces hold the mirrored glass, the looking glass mirror, the images of an altar. So each hourglass is called two quadrants. To remove four quadrants would take a course, both altars and a mirror images with it. In mathematics, it could be stated that regular altars are in the quadrant x and y and x negative y. And the looking glass, people, the mirror image, equal splits made from each altar as a copy are in the quadrants negative x and y and X and negative Y. Click your heels together and there will be in a snap is both in the movie and in programming. Military monarch slave models are taught to click their heels together. Mengele, Dr. Black, Michael Aquino and others also like to click their Nazi boots together. While they were and especially while they program children. This is why we have it when they heavily programmed the Germans. After World War I, silence is both in the movie and a command of programming. This word silence, all in caps, 
stands for a code of no talking, which runs deep in the mind of a slave. As in the movie, certain slave altars will talk to their masters as Dory did. If you please, sir. The keys and triggers to control the switching of personalities to give orders are frequently based on the Wizard of Oz material. A slave owner might use clues from this. We will continue this um, Thursday if it didn't creep you out too much. Um, have a wonderful couple days. We will go back to see the wizard. <laughs>